Evening everybody, Silver Waltz here, back from the Transformers review. Um, going to be doing, as per the title page, Roadbuster. Um, Roadbuster is a bit of a unique one in my take on um, on Transformers reviews, in that he's a comic only character um, who gets a toy. He's one of the few, he's one of the very, very few comic only characters who actually gets a toy. Um, Roadbuster not only gets this repaint, um, but he also did have a Generation One toy, which is it's a bit of a it's a it's a bit of a you know a, a treasure chamber of lost bits and pieces for the original Roadbuster. But that's, I'll get to that bit of the toy later on. Now, Roadbuster is a char as a character um, is a fighter, and he is a very very capable soldier. Hence why he's a member of the Wreckers, and he is very charismatic, very sure of himself, very violent and very destructive, very very good at his job on the battlefield. When he becomes off the battlefield, Roadbuster is a very good example of a soldier who doesn't have a war. He becomes very introverted, very quiet, um, they're almost depressed. The fact that he's not fighting, which you know, that in a, in a human being, that's a sign of you know deep-rooted psychological issues. The only time you're actually happy is when you're killing people. Um, yeah, we put you in a little b square room for that one. But with Roadbuster, of course, no one thinks anything the better of him. And it's it's always been the kind of thing amongst the fandom is where Roadbuster is concerned, is that despite the fact that he is obviously such a good soldier and he's such a natural leader on the battlefield, why he's only ever a grunt. And that's all he is. He's only ever a grunt. In all the timelines, he is a wrecker, but he's also only a grunt. And he first shows up in the... Um, in the in the the Marvel Comics continuity, where um, he's again, as as I've said, you know, he is part of the Wreckers universe, and he, even at that point, he's quite a, a nasty, not a nasty character, but a hard bitten soldier. You know, there's not an awful lot of compassion in him when it comes to battlefield antics, and that's very clearly shown when he comes across a, a, an auto a Decepticon double agent. Not the double agent that eventually causes his death in the UK Marvel timelines, but there we go. And he watches this double agent after feeding this double agent um, uh, false information. He watches him die and just stands there and lets it happen. Um, in the Marvel Comics, the US edition, Roadbuster meets his fate at the hands of the Path Blaster, which is a very, very powerful weapon, and Roadbuster actually picks it up and attempts to fire it. Um, it takes a chunk out of Galvatron's head, which is pretty good in itself, and then promptly blows the smithereens, taking Roadbuster with it. In the UK timelines, Roadbuster um, meets his end at the hands of Scattershot. And the way that comes about is that it's another comic only character. It's at the end of the Decepticon War, Rodimus, uh, the Autobot of the Cybertronian War. Rodimus Prime is in control and he wants to pass on the Matrix of Leadership to Springer, the leader of the Wreckers. A Decepticon double agent by the name of Triton steps to the fore and says, No, wait a minute, we don't want I don't want that to happen. What should happen is Magnus should have it. Magnus should become control of the Autobots. Um in leads to R, leads to Oom, leads to BANG! Scattershot blows Roadbuster's head off in order to protect Triton. Um, which starts a whole series of events um, which leads to the Autobot Civil War. Um, yeah, you know, they just, they just don't stop fighting no matter what happens really. Now in the Dreamwave comic continuities, Roadbuster is, once again, obviously, part of the Wreckers. And it's, he comes into it after Optimus Prime has disappeared. And he doesn't really do an awful lot um, until it comes to the IDW, where the IDW fact sides of it present the Transformers universe in obviously a much darker light. Well, the Dreamwaves are fairly dark, but the IDW really does cross it. Intervene. I mean, you take the episode where you find out that Sunstreak has become a headmaster, you know, there's dark for you, but in the IDW continuities, the Autobots and the Decepticons, of course, have split into various factions. Um, Roadbuster is part of the, uh, is part of the Wreckers, who, of course, are being led by Springer, and they're fighting Ratbats Ultracons. Um, 
and that is the main thing concerning concerning the action with the wreckers. Now, when Thunderwing comes back, it is Roadbuster that saves two of the Technobots in a rather hint of irony, I could imagine you'd think, but um, who saves two of the Technobots from being killed by I think it's Thunderwing's minions. Um, however, Roadbuster, despite and how brave and how valiant and all this he is. Meets his end again, and this time he meets his end at the hands of Thunderwing, which wasn't exactly a rare thing to happen because most people died at the hands of Thunderwing. Strangely enough, though, Roadbuster doesn't die to the underbase powered Starscream. Oh, <laughs> it's a rather distinct honour, I think you'll agree. Um, but yes, anyway, that's the story of Roadbuster. Very valiant, very hard, dies a lot. Oh well. Now, as I said, Roadbuster is one of the very few uh, comic-only characters to actually get his own toy. Uh, can I move that light a little bit? Could I have like a ghost in this light? Because you can tell I've just shaved. Does that look? <laughs> anyway, um, you know, he gets his own toy. Um, and now, he's Generation 1 toy. For the size of the toy that he was, Generation 1 Roadbuster, as anybody who's tried to get a Generation 1 Roadbuster, I myself have looked a couple of times with never anything too serious. Um, it's really hard to get because he's got an obscene amount of parts. I mean, the hardest part to find, which has to, which is probably one of the smallest parts ever released with Transformers, would have to be his Jeep mode handgun. And it's tiny. I mean, finding a, a, a fully complete G1 Roadbuster is a bit of a monumental task, and as such, it goes for quite a fair price. Now, t Roadbuster. Um, is redecoed again um, in the third of the, which is of course one of the main reasons why I'm doing this video, as it allows me to do the third of the Cybertron Defense team repaints. This being a repaint of Cybertron Defense Hotshot. Released as a two pack with um, Dirge, which is just a repaint of, um, I believe it's Cybertron Deluxe Starscream. No, it's not. It's Cybertron Voyager Starscream? Would he be a Voyager class? He's too big for a deluxe. Mm. Anyway, um, he's repackaged with Dirge, who I really think is actually quite a nice toy as well. And seeing as I haven't yet done a G1 Dirge video, I might do it on that one. Hmm, quite nice. See, the, at the moment I've got a problem in that I currently have um, my shelf of classics there, my alternators there, um, and a few, and, and actually, apart from what's in the bookcase in my bedroom, that's literally it. That's all there is of Transformers because I've got, because of course there's three of us living in the house now, so it's not that big. So three cases, I've got three large, big plastic boxes of Transformers packed away because um, I've simply got no room for them. Along, packed away along with my Dino Riders and stuff like that. So I'm in a bigger house, you know, I've got one spare. But anyway, um, on to the, this toy. This, is, of course, is a repaint of Cybertron Defense Hotshot. And because it's a, re it's a Cybertron toy, it has a gimmick, namely the Cyber Planet keys. Um, I, I don't even know if this is the right one for Roadbuster, but there's, you know, they've all got basic designs. You know. And in all fairness, right, I'll just pull this up so you can get a, a decent look at it if I can. Right, as Cybertron Defense, as, as Cybertron key gimmicks go, this one's rather lame, it has to be said. It, 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 it's rather very anticlimactic. You know, when you take a look at um, uh, Cybertron, Cybertron Defense scatter shots, you know, uber missiles of doom on his arms, and um, red alert, f giant phallic missile, you know, these are rather anticlimactic in comparison. But then in saying that, um, this is the smallest of the three toys. And... Um, it bears absolutely no resemblance whatsoever in any way, shape or form to Master Chief's Warthog. Nope! Has nothing to do with Halo. Looks nothing like the Warthog whatsoever. Well, it... it no more than classics... Um, I forgot his name, though. Beachcomber, that's it. No more than classics, Be universe Beachcomber does, but there we go. Um, but as I said, it is the smallest of the um, of the three Cybertron defense teams. Comes with one gizmo, a very nifty looking, savage looking dagger. Uh, transforming it, it's Cybertron, so it's not exactly rocket science. Pull the legs out, spread them apart. Leave it. No. Flip the wrists, that, flip the um, 
little groin bits down pull out the arms push the head in and then decide which way you want to have his guns you know you can have them pointing down or you can have them pointing up it's entirely up to yourself whichever way you want to have it oh and pull out his arms of course so that he's got now as befitting and then you take his sword and you can put it either in his hand like thus or as I prefer to have it as a rather nifty stabbing claw um, where Roadbusters concern this toy it does come with um, uh, it does come because it's Roadbuster you know it does have to have the obligatory lots and lots of firepower so on top of the shoulder cannons you do get missile launchers well clusters of missile launchers in the legs if you just pull the two little green bits down you get them and if you pull the shoulder bits down you get more missile launchers you know cue that nice scenes in Transformers Cybertron with Hotshot going ah! I'm flashing you but there we go um, I like it but then I, as I said before you know I'm a big fan of the of the Cybertron defense team anyway um, which mind I still need to get a cheap, cheap version of Red Alert to paint it for my Imperial Guard but there we go you know, I do like this one. I do think it's very, very nice. Um, its colour scheme isn't too bad, and it's certainly better than ro animated Roadbuster Ultra Magnus, which is just fugly um, for a colour scheme for Ultra Magnus. It really is just fugly. Um, I don't like that one at all. As so, I, you know, I honestly haven't bought it. Oh, sorry. There's two little sets of missile launchers in the front there. Forgot that bit. Not that it makes an awful lot of difference, really. Um, you know, it's got fairly decent posability, despite the absolutely huge shoulder pads and the legs. You know, it bends at the knee. Um, it's got some degree of articulation in the foot from the way it transforms. Blah, 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 blah. The head turns. It's a nice little toy, and it suits the... Despite the absolute total glare in colour schemes, I mean, in all fairness, colour-wise, it sits better next to... Um, Overload than it does next to Countdown because of course Countdown's red and white, whereas Overload is more military, more military esque gear than um, more military esque color schemes. That's what I was going to say. Yes, uh, but yes. Anyway, I got this. Is this was packaged with the um, uh, Dirge, but I believe this toy was also repainted into Springer that was a Botcon exclusive, and of course the other Botcon exclusive was of course Cybertron Blades repainted green into Helicopter Mode Springer, it was also repainted into um, sorry, Cybertron Cybertron Evac repainted red into Blades green into Springer and kind of like bluey grey thing for Whirl who is a comic character who I'll probably do as well because he ties in quite closely with um, Roadbuster but yes that is this video done for now um, there's not much more I can really say on Roadbuster but so far I'll sign off for now so for now this is Silverbolt um, with uh, Universe Roadbuster saying au revoir adios I'll be